Let's look what, what the Lord has for us today, amen. It's so good to be in the house of God, amen. I'm glad that you uh, were able to conquer the, uh, the, the nice uh, covers. It's always a battle whenever it's this kind of climate, right? It's like it's so good. It's, it's stay home weather. We went on Netflix and do all kinds of other stuff, you know. And it's like a, a battle in our mind, you know, should I stay or should I go? You know, it's only one Sunday. We have all these little thoughts in our mind that want to creep up, amen. But, amen, praise God that we were able to uh, conquer that, amen, be victorious and say, no, I have to be in the house of God, amen. I have to be in his house, amen. I have to go worship him. Uh, he's so good to me. And so, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's a victory in itself, amen. Uh, I tell you that because a lot of people, they're not going to be able to conquer, unfortunately. They, 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 they couldn't conquer. They, 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 they let, you know, uh, anything, you know, there's a saying, right, if you want an excuse, you'll find it, right? So anytime you want an excuse, you're going to find it. And, you know, and, and it's unfortunate, amen, because it's so good to be in the house of God. Amen. It's like once you're here, you don't want to leave. I don't know if that happens to you, but it happens to me. It's like, man, it's, God, if I, can I just stay here forever? Like, can I just shut the door and just be here all the time? You know, it's like a, 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 a safe zone, you know. A uh, safe house, right? A safe house, amen. First Kings chapter 17, it says, Now Elijah uh, the Tibish from the Tibish in Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel lives, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years except at my word. When the word of the Lord came to Elijah, leave here. Turn eastward and hide in the Kerith Ravine, east of the Jordan. You would drink from the brook, and I have directed the ravens to supply you with food there. Somebody say there. So he did what the Lord said, what, what the Lord had told him, and he went to the Kerith Ravine, east of the Jordan, and stayed there. Somebody stay, say, stay there. The ravines brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook. Sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him. Go at once to Zareph, Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. Somebody say there. I have directed a, will, a widow there. Somebody say there. To supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath, when he came to the, the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called her and asked, would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? God bless his word. You may be seated. The, the title of this series that I want to talk to you for the next few weeks uh, is called There. Man, and it's... As a subtitle, we've, we've placed uh, the right people, the right place, the right time. I believe that there's a there for everybody. I believe that there, there are theirs that we have missed. I believe that uh, there are theirs that God had predestined and assigned for us. And because we became too distracted or disconnected, because we, 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 uh, we began to... Uh, Drift ourselves sometimes. We have these moments in our lives where we kind of, you know, we, 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 we drift ourselves from the Lord. You know, we, we, we're not as, as on fire as we were once. You know, we have these moments of up and downs in our lives where, you know, we're, 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 we're very excited to serve the Lord and we're very excited to, 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 to seek Him and, we, and we're, we're doing everything that we can possibly do to get close to God. But then we have these moments in our life where we just, you know, it's kind of, we just kind of, you know, slow down, we, we, we're not an, as intense, we're not as intentional as, as, as we should be. And, and I believe that sometimes between those up and downs, we can miss our theirs. We can miss those places. We can miss those people. We can miss those, uh, that, that, that timing that God had for us to receive something from him that was there. And we didn't get there, you know, because we were over here. And so I, I want to talk to you about there, a place. Uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 8, and I'm just going to go to a lot of them so you don't have to worry about them. Genesis 2, 8 says, Now the Lord had planned a garden in the east, in Eden, 
and there he put the man he had formed. There is a place where God places you. You got to understand that. There is sometimes a place where God places you. And you have to understand, okay, God placed me here. The word of God says that he had placed man. He said he put him there. Where? In the Garden of Eden. There was a place. There was a there for, the, for, for Adam that God had placed him in. Genesis 12, 5 says, and he took his wife, Sarah, talking about Abraham and his nephew, Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haram. And they set out for the land of Canaan and they arrived there. I want to tell you that there is sometimes a place where God leads you to. You have to be aware, uh, aware of that. Sometimes God, there is a place where God places you like he did with Adam. But sometimes there is a place where God leads you to like he did with Abraham. And God's saying, I need you to go over there. In that same chapter of Genesis 12, the word of God says, And he took his wife Sarah and his nephew Lot and all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Aram, and they set out to the land of Canaan and they arrived there. There is also a place of vision and established. Uh, a, a, a vision is it's a place where vision is established and you began to dream. Genesis 12 eight says, from there he went on towards the hills of east. If somebody can tell one of the, uh, Mike, that this is, is not, it's not too, uh, I feel like it's, ooh, ooh, yeah, reverb. Uh -huh. It says, uh, from there he went, uh, Genesis 12 eight, he says, from there he went, it might have some too much low. From there he went on towards the hills east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I eat on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord. And call the name the Lord. Sometimes there is a place of stopping point. It's not a final destination. Sometimes there is a place of transition. Not something that you were meant to stay there forever. There, you got to understand what there means. The word of God says in Genesis 12, 8. Thank you, Mike. Genesis 12, 8 says, Now there was a famine in the land, and Abraham went down to Egypt to live there for a while because the famine was severe. Sometimes there could be a temporary place, not a final place where you were supposed to get to. Genesis 22, 5, speaking about now Isaac and his son, he says, and he said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I go, while I and the boy go over there and we will worship and then we will come back to you. Sometimes there is a place that's for the select, for the few. Uh, you're not meant to take everybody with you when you go there. Sometimes you got to stay people, you stay here because God's sending me over there. There is a place that God assigns for you. When we talk about Moses in chapter uh, 3 of Exodus, a uh, version of the Lord appeared to him in the flames of fire with them within a bush. And Moses saw that the bush was on fire and he did not burn. Sometimes there is a place of encounter and where calling is established. And sometimes you can miss you're there because you're too busy. And you miss that calling, you miss that moment, you miss that encounter with God because you didn't understand that that's where, there was where God was. Exodus 15, 27 says, also speaking about Moses, says, and then they came to Elam where there were 12 springs and 70 palm trees and they camped there near the water. Sometimes there is a place of sustainment and provision and you can miss those blessings because you were distracted. Sometimes there is a place of blessing where God had assigned that place specifically for you, but you didn't understand that there or the importance of there when you got there. So somebody say there. I, I share these passages uh, of that were there because that place uh, that was there or the when they got there, there it was a place of 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 provision it was for some it was a, a temporary stepping stone for some of them it was a final destination for others there meant that it was a place where God was going to establish something in your life that there was going to be a new direction that you needed to take and you needed to be aware that there was an important place Listen, the passage that I shared to you where there was a there uh, had people, these people, they had to listen to direction. They 
had to understand location. They had to be obedient to God's word. And, and, and I want to tell you that everybody that we spoke to right now, from Abraham, Isaac to Moses, they paid attention to the there. They recognized the place and they recognized its implications. They acted on God's word and they understood what there meant and they listened. They were not distracted. They were attentive. They were not disconnected, but they were connected. They were not nearsighted or close-minded. They walked in faith and obedience because they understood where there, where, where God was taking them. God has a there or theirs predestined for you to arrive to, and he has a designed a plan of blessing and which involves not only a place, but involves people. It not only it involves people and places, but it involves seasons. Not only involves people, places, and seasons, but it involves uh, the, the, the right timing, the obedience of God. And we, and we can miss our theirs in our lives if we are too distracted. And if we don't align ourselves with God, His Word and spiritually tune our ears, listen to this, tune our ears to His voice. We will miss out on what should have and could have and would have been, but wasn't. Somebody say there. Listen, there represents more than a location, a place. It represents people. It represents things. It represents specific moments, times, and seasons that God has established for you. But you have to be listening to that call from God and be willing to go there. That's why we read 1 Kings. Uh, let's go back there and we'll, we'll kind of dissect a little bit this passage on 1 Kings chapter 17. It says, now Elijah the Tabish from Tish, uh, Tishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years except in my word. God had brought a, a drought upon the land. He had... Uh, through, the, 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 through his word and through the life of the prophet, he had established and he had let it be known to the region, to the place, to that kingdom at that time that from, uh, from the moment that Elijah would speak the word, there would no longer be rain, that they would suffer through a huge drought. You have to understand that this is a, a mostly desert area. They, 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 uh, they, they, they needed rain. They, they, uh, they, they were... Uh, 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 and and uh, what's the word? Uh, dependent. They were dependent of rain. They needed, they needed rain not only for themselves, but they needed rain for their crops. They needed rain for their, for, 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 for their animals. They needed rain. They, rain was es essential for them. And the word of God says that in Elijah's word, they, there was a, a drought being brought upon the land. And they would, it would not cease until Elijah uh, received word again for that drought to be finished. But during that time, the word of God tells Elijah, the, the, the man that right here we read says, whom, whom served God, who, 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 was, who was God's servant. He says, look, okay, uh, now there's a drought, and, but I, I'm going to take care of you. And, and verse 2 says, and the, the word of the Lord came to Elijah, and he says, leave here. Leave here. Turn eastward and hide in the Kareth Ravine, east of the Jordan, and you will drink from the brook. And I have directed the ravens to supply you with food there. He says, leave here and go there. Now, I, wanna, I want you to understand something that sometimes uh, 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 here and there cannot necessarily represent a place, but sometimes it can represent a mindset. Sometimes it's a mentality issue that we have. Sometimes it's not an issue of location or physically moving, but it's more of understanding and renewing your mind. Sometimes you're stuck here when you should be over there, mentally speaking. Sometimes you've, you've grown too accustomed uh, uh, to your walk with God that everything seems very uh, uh, second nature to you, uh, this, 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 this Christianity thing that God. But God says, no, there's more. There's things that eye has not seen and ear has not heard that has not even entered into the mind of men. He says that I've prepared for you. But if you stay here, you'll never go there. 
Because here sometimes represents your, 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 your comfort. Sometimes here represents that, that place where you get stuck, that place where you just don't seem to get out of. But there represents a place of provision. It, it, it represents a place of calling. It represents a place of ministry. It represents a place where God has assigned that there for you. But if you stay here, you'll never know what it looks like to be there. And so sometimes it's a mentality issue that you're struggling with. It's not that you have to move physically because you can go anywhere physically, but if you keep your mind the same, you'll have the same results. So he told Elijah, leave here and go there. Now, verse 5 says, so he did what the Lord had told him. And he went to Kareth Ravine east of Jordan and stayed there. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and brought meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. And look at it says, and sometime later the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land, and the word of the Lord came to him again, right? I want to say again because he came a second time, and he says, go at once. Somebody say, go at once. How many understand that sometimes uh, there's nothing to think about. When God says you got to move, you got to move. The word of God says, and, and the first time he called them, he says, you know what? Don't stay here. Go over there. But the second time he says, go at once. Sometimes God is moving you uh, in, in, in a way where it's progressive. He's moving you according to how close you get to him, and he's moving you. But I want you to understand that sometimes God has a way to accelerate things in your life. When you're willing to move instantly. When you're willing to, 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 to say, you know what, and make a decision in your life and say, okay, you know what, it's time to do what I've been called to do. And in that moment, in the second time that he calls them, he says, go at once. He says, I need you to move quicker than you've moved before. You know, I, I, I've, I've been reflecting in my life for the past couple of years, ever since I turned 40, I don't know, you know. When you hit 40, you know, you feel like you're, you're, you're not going uphill. You're starting to go downhill, right? You, you reach uh, the pinnacle, right, of, of your life. And, and I know that some of our older people is like, come on, boy, you're still, you're still young, right? But, but I'll tell you one thing. You know, I started thinking. I said, man, how much time do I have left to pastor this church, God? Because I, I don't want to be this 70-year-old this person or 80-year-old person that, uh, his time has gone. I'm, sure, I'm still trying to hold on to something. I want to build the next generation and let them do something as well, you know. But at the same time, it's like it's hard to let go because, you know, God has used it to establish something, whether, wh whether it be big or small. But it's your baby, you know. It's something that you did. And so I was, I've been thinking a lot, man, who, who's going to pastor the church again, you know. And, 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 and I know that sometimes the, the first thought is, well, my son should do it or, or something like that. But I've never really necessarily uh, thought that way, to be honest. I felt that it had to be uh, called. And, and if, my, if God calls my, my kids to, to lead, well, praise God. And, and if he builds somebody within the house, well, praise God too, you know. Uh, who knows? It might be one of our young people uh, sitting here today, you know, that will lead the BCP church. But regardless of that, my thoughts were, you know, I got to do what I got to do now. Like, I don't have time. I feel like, I feel like, I feel like. Like the first calling was, was when, 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 when God told Elijah, hey, go from here to there. And I've been in that journey from here to there. But now I feel like at this age, God's saying, I need you to go at once. Like he says, uh, pick up the space, the, the, the pace, son. It's time to move faster. Why? Because I don't know exactly how much time I have. And in this case, the word of God came to Elijah and says, you know what, you've stayed here. You went from here to there, but now I need you to go at once from here to there again. So we read there. He says, so, he, so verse uh, uh, seven, uh, verse 9 says, so go at once to, Zaraph, to, to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow where to, where to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there. Can I tell you that sometimes there represents a specific place, but also a specific person that God has assigned in that place for you. He said, this widow was gathering sticks, and he called her and asked her, would you bring me a little water in a jar 
so I may drink. Listen, the widow was the there that God had set up for Elijah. There are people set up for you waiting in a specific location, assigned and designed by God, if you're willing to move from here to there. What am I talking about? I'm talking about that, that you have to be aware of the there that God has placed. Because sometimes it's not just a location, but it's a specific people that God has intentionally brought about in your life to bless you. That's what the widow represented. She, she represented not only a place where he was sent to, but she represented the, the, the person that God had assigned specifically for him. Now listen, I'm glad that the widow woman didn't move from there. Listen to this. I'm glad she didn't move from there even though her husband had died. You know, usually sometimes when people pass away, they, uh, uh, they, the, sometimes the, the, the first reaction is, well, you know, well, let's, let's start a new chapter in life, you know. This house bears all the memories of my loved one. You know, I don't know if I can bear the fact to live here. Let's just move on and just go somewhere. Let me go stay with my mom. Let me go move in with my sister. So we make these transitions in our lives because we've lost people or loved ones, right? Uh, but I'm so glad that she didn't move from there. She stayed there. She could have because her husband had died. I'm so glad she didn't move there even knowing that there was a famine in the land, that she didn't do one of the uh, Naomi moves, right, when Naomi also had famine in the land. And what did she do? She took her husband and her kids and she moved out. And it's sad because if you look at it and if you understand the story, she moved from here to there, but there cost her the lives of her children and her husband. Sometimes you moving from here to there without the direction of God can cause you more uh, dilemma than anything. So I'm glad she didn't move, there, move from there, this widow, because her husband had passed away. I'm glad she didn't move from there because there was famine in the land. And even though she was looked down uh, upon in society as being a single mother, because it was a big deal to be a single mama in those times, she stayed there. Why? Because God needed her to be there. Sometimes you're the there that somebody is going to get to. But if you move too quickly, not only will you miss out on the blessing to be the there for that person, but then at the same time, you'll pass on that blessing to somebody else because God's still going to move. He's still going to do. He's still going to act. But sometimes we move too fast based on circumstances, based on situations in our life. And, and even though we were supposed to stay put and actually not move from there, but be the there that somebody would arrive to, we missed out on the blessing that God had for us. I've seen that happen in my life. I've seen it through just uh, people that I've gone to, you know, that I've met, people that have been a blessing to my life, but also people that I've been able to be a blessing to their life. I believe in divine connections. I, do, I believe that God has established me as a there uh, for somebody else. That I've had people arrive in my life that if they weren't aware that I was there there, they would have missed out on the blessing not only to know me, but to know that what God can do through me to their lives. You know, I've seen it happen. And I'll explain that to a little bit later. So I'm glad she didn't move. But I'm also glad that Elijah listened when God said to go instantly. I'm glad that Elijah didn't question, and I say this with all due respect, to the ridiculous command from God during the middle of a drought. When he said to go to a widow's house so he could find sustainment there. Don't you find it crazy? I mean, how come he didn't send him to the richest guy in the town? I'm sure there was wealthy people back then as well. Why would God send him being near a brook where there was constant water? Why would he send him out to a widow's house who more than likely couldn't work 
as other people in society. But yet God was going to use her to sustain him in the middle of the drought. Don't you think that's a little bit ridiculous? Now that you think about it. But yet God said, go there. So I'm glad that he listened to her. And he didn't question God. And he went to where God told him. Listen, God needs someone that has turned their ear to God's voice in such a way that even when it sounds ridiculous what God is saying, all you do is move in faith. We need some ridiculous, God-fearing, Jesus-loving, faith-moving people in our church. Because God's going to sometimes whisper ridiculous Things. And I say ridiculous not because God is ridiculous, but because it sounds ridiculous what he's asking you to do. And the thing about ridiculous is that it sounds so ridiculous we don't believe it. But that's faith. Faith is believing something so crazy that doesn't make sense. I mean, Elijah could have been God. What's this widow going to do for me? You know, we're in a drought. I'm sure she's lacking more than I am. But he said, no, I need you to go from here to there. Somebody say there. But the story that, that I'm sharing with you actually starts with Elijah being sent to a certain location the first time. It was a, a place, a brook. It says, when the, Lord of the, when the word of the Lord came to Elijah, he says, leave here and turn eastward and hide in the Kareth Ravine. East of the Jordan, and you will drink from the brook, and I will have directed the ravens to supply you with food there. Even that sounds ridiculous. You cannot go there if you're not willing to move from here. Because although there could represent a place of blessing, sustainment, calling, and fulfillment, here could represent a place of instability, fear, regret, curse, and unfulfillment. Here sometimes is the unhealthy relationship that you're having. Sometimes here is the unhealthy friendship that you entertain. Sometimes here is the unhealthy environment that you find yourself. Sometimes here represents an unhealthy investment, an unhealthy habit, or an unhealthy place that you find yourself. Here could represent where you need it to be, but not anymore. Here is, is that place that was meant to be temporary, but you have stayed there too long. Here could be the business position that was supposed to be a stepping stone, not a destiny, but you got too comfortable there, so you stayed in that here. Here was, the, was to be a transitional, not permanent, but you, had, but you got sidetracked it, and so you took your here as to be the there, and you were supposed to move from here to there. So Elijah moved, the word of God says, from here to there. And as ridiculous as it sounded, why? Because he tells them, go to the brook. He says, and I have directed some ravens. Now, I don't know if you like uh, animal information, but ravens are not givers. They're takers. So that's ridiculous. I found a few facts about ravens, and I want you to read. I want to read an answer that I wrote. It says, ravens are known to steal the food of many birds and mammals, even from dogs. They can act in pairs. One individual captures the dog's attention while the other one steals its food. They also follow wood, pack, wood, they also follow wolf, wolf packs for picking remains from their prey. You see, even the first time that God said, move from here to there, was a little bit ridiculous because ravens are not supposed to be helping. They're not helpful animals. When you move where God wants you to move, he will use the most unlikely people, even your enemies, to feed you and sustain you because God told you to move from here to there and you listened. See, that's the beauty of God. When, we, when we're, our, 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 our ears are tuned to him and we are aware of what he's trying to uh, uh, do or, or not necessarily aware of it, but in obedience, act upon it and move uh, when he wants us to move and, and do when he wants us to do and act when he wants us to act. Uh, and, and even though it sounds impossible, even sounds ridiculous, even though it sounds improbable, 
the truth of the matter is that if God said it, he can use anything and anyone to supply to you just like he did the ravens. He took the nature of this animal and he twisted their nature for his benefit. And he says, I know you're takers. I know that you like to steal. But for now on, for this moment, for my servants, you will be a servant to him. And you're going to supply what he needs because that's what I sent. And, and, and sometimes if you don't understand a, 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 that to move in God's voice, you, you don't realize that the people that you think don't like you or hate you will actually be the biggest blessings in your life. But because you're nearsighted and close-minded, you can miss out on them being your there because you want to stay here in yourself. I've seen it. I've seen people bless me that were improbable to bless me. I've seen, pe I've seen people to give me that they were not the ones that I thought would give me. And they have. I've seen people that didn't like me or even spoke about me be more of a blessing sometimes than people that are close to me. Why? Because I understood that God can make anything happen. And he can use anyone. Even your enemies. Someone say there. I want to tell you that you have a there waiting for you. You need to start moving. The word of God says that he did what the Lord told him, verse 5. And he went to the Kareth ravine east of the Jordan and stayed there. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook. Look what verse 7 says. And sometimes later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And then the word of the Lord came to him. I want you to understand that sometimes you're there is a temporary situation. It's a seasonal temporary uh, uh, situation. You're there when you arrive there. It's not always meant for you to stay there. It's meant for you to receive something there. In this case, he received from, our, from the most improbable sources. He received blessing and sustainment from the most unlikely people. Things, But God used what he needed to use to sustain his servant there. And he was able to withstand whatever drought was happening around him because he heeded God's voice. But there was a time now for him to move from there to over there. And we have to be tuned to that voice. So he says, the word of God says in verse 7, so, the, so, so he did what the Lord said and he told him what, he went there. Uh, I'm sorry, verse 7 says, sometime later the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came to him. Look what that says. It says, and the rain, and, 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 and the brook dried up because there had been no rain there. In other words, when he got there, there was enough for him there. But there was a time when that was no more what needed to be there. So what did he need to do? We have to understand seasons in our lives. We have to understand that sometimes uh, when we get there, it's only meant to be there for a while. You're not meant to stay where you're at in your job. You're not meant to stay where you're at spiritually. You're not meant to stay where you are financially. But sometimes you can stay somewhere where there was once something there, but there's nothing there anymore for you. And you can miss out on that. And you're trying to reap from somewhere that doesn't have what was once there for you. So you have to move from there to there. I want to conclude. On verse 9, he says, go at once to Zaraf in the region. Of Sidon, and he said, Stay there. So he moved them a second time. And this time he says, I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. I've directed a widow there to supply you with, with food. I believe, that, I believe that sometimes we we stay in a place whether it be physically or mentally. Sometimes we stay in a relationship or we stay with certain 
friends and people in our lives. We continue to have the same uh, circle sometimes. And that has become our there. And we stay there. And we stay there for many reasons. We stay there because it's comfortable. Sometimes we stay there because it's what's known. Sometimes we don't like change. Sometimes we stay there because uh, they're the people that have been there. And sometimes our desires and our motives are good. Sometimes we stay in that position at work because, you know, it's, it's, it's good enough. Sometimes we stay and um, that level in that corporate office because, well, it's just it's good enough. But sometimes we've overstayed our welcome, if, you, if I want to uh, phrase it that way. Because I believe that we get stuck sometimes in life, not because God wants that for you, but because you stop listening to his voice. See, every time that Elijah moved, it was at the tune of God's voice. So it could have been that you should have moved, but you didn't listen. It could be that God wanted you to act, and you didn't listen. It could be that God wanted you to start that business because he was ready to bless you, but you didn't listen. And you say, well, what was, what was I gonna, how was I going to do it? Don't worry. If he can use ravens, he can use anything. But because you stayed there and you made your there that wasn't supposed to be permanent, permanent, you didn't move. You didn't understand. There was more of you. That you're not defined for one thing. I had a conversation with uh, Mike a few, uh, a few months ago. He was telling me, we're talking about ministries in church, you know, his, the, the fivefold ministries, and we were just having that conversation. And I hope in our conversation that he understood that he's not defined by a guitar or by singing. You know, I was in a, in a leader's, uh, uh, I, I meet with a, uh, a mentor every, every once I can, but usually I try to do it once a month, but. I hadn't done it in a couple of months, but I met, uh, I, I met up with my, one of my mentors that he speaks to my life. And, and we sat for, for several hours yesterday. He, just, he was just teaching me, and I was just listening to what he had to say. And uh, he told me, he was telling me that, that sometimes, I, I actually, I, he, he says something, and I commented something that I've learned in my own life. I said, I, I can't let people define me by what you think I am. And I told him, let me explain to you. I said, sometimes we let people, they say, well, uh, you're, you're the pastor, and I am a pastor. I am a pastor. But I'm also a business owner. I also consider myself an entrepreneur because I'm, I'm constantly thinking of how to open businesses, and I've opened businesses and helped people open businesses. And I went back to college this year because I plan to write a book. And so I, I'm going to be a writer. I want to be a writer. So somebody might tell you, well, you're just this. And you can let yourself, and they can put you there because that's the there that they want you in. Or you can come out of your there because God says there's more. So you go from there to there. I don't know if I'm making any sense. And so sometimes we get stuck because we stop listening to God's voice. And you have to understand that there's more of you than what you've experienced up to now. So you begin to question if God made a mistake. You say things like, I thought this was where God wanted me. I thought this was what God had for me. Let me tell you, it could have been. God didn't make a mistake, but you just stayed there too long. Listen, I'm not talking about location necessarily. Because for many, it's a physical, it's, it's not a physical thing, it's a mental thing. You want to know why some people have hard, for instance, you want to know why some people have a hard time with church today? Because they still think it's 1950. And it's not. It's 2019. So 
maybe the message hasn't changed, but church in itself has changed. But we haven't changed. We stayed there when we should have been there. Why is your business stuck? Because sometimes you haven't changed. That was one of the things that we were talking about yesterday. And it, I just love it when, I, when that, when I think, because I, I know what God's been telling me all week, and then he confirms it to somebody else. Like, okay, God, I know now, now, you, now I know it's what you wanted me to say. He was like, he's like, Juan, he says, he says, it, it, he says, the dream doesn't change, but it does need to evolve. He says, so go back to what you dreamed before. He says, and look at it. And then know that it didn't necessarily change. It just it needs to evolve. He said, your son was your son when he was born. But he doesn't look the same when he was little. Why? Because even though he's your son, it has to change. And what happens is sometimes we stay there when we should have been there. And it wasn't that. God made a mistake. It wasn't that. It was because you didn't listen to the voice and you didn't move according to what he wanted you to move. Let me give you another example I was thinking about. Because I was thinking, God, what, what are the, the things? And I remember I grew up, I grew up in, in, in a very conservative church. Uh, my parents were always part of the Simmons of God, which is a, a great organization. And, uh, but... Uh, growing up, and I say this, you know, I, I, times have changed now, but I say this just thinking back when I grew up, um, that they, they, uh, they, didn't, they didn't like dance teams. As a matter of fact, to them, it was, it was heresy, it was evil. And I remember a few years ago, I even found an article uh, lying in my office, and it, and it says, it was talking about dance and how it's not for our time, it was just for Israel and it was this whole controversial thing, and I was reading it. But I remember, I remember a few years ago when we started the dance team. I said to myself, "I've never, I've never seen it in church. You know, I never grew up around it. I never experienced it growing up as part of the worship. But it all started with, in part, with my daughter because she loves to dance. And say, well, I need to do something because she's either going to dance for God or she's going to dance for the, for, for the enemy. And I think I'd rather have her dance for God. So I remember that I, I would see her and I just see her passion and, 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 she, and her moves and things like that. And then I said, I wonder if there's other girls in the church that like to dance. So I put the word out there. God blessed me with the Mejia girls, and the Garcia girls. And we just started putting things together. And I had to shift my mind from what everything that I had grew up with. You know, everything that I thought, everything that was put in me. And I said, there's no way, there's no way that these girls are not worshiping God. Look how they worship. Look how they serve. Look how they practice. So God was moving me from here to there mentally. In my business, I've seen shifts that have happened. Throughout the time, the way the IRS operates is, is, is changed. Through every president, things have come harder. And I've lasted 20 years doing what I do because I've learned to evolve with the business. I've learned to evolve with the change. I've learned to move mentally ideally with time sometimes your, mar your marriage is struggling because you got stuck a few in the first few weeks of your marriage you're still living in year one when you're in year 10 and you think that everything is great and you forgot to make her feel loved and wanted you, you used to impress her with teddy bears and flowers and candies and gifts but see that doesn't that doesn't move her anymore. She wants responsibility, help around the house, and for you to be healthier. So you see how things change. But sometimes we get stuck because we refuse to move from there to there. And women, well, what can I say? Don't even let me go there. 
you got lost in time yourself. You still think you look good. But you better get to work. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the truth is that sometimes we get stuck. And we, sometimes we don't see what God has for us. Because we don't know how to listen to his voice. Because we haven't deepened our relationship with him in such a way that help us to tune our ears to say, okay, God, what's the next step? We, we serve a God that's moving. He's doing. That even though he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, he's also a God that keeps moving forward and doing new things. As a matter of fact, every day he says, I have new mercies for you today. He's, he's the God that says, I, I'm here to do a new thing. So verse 10, as I finish, it says, so he went to Sarephath, Elijah. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called her and asked, would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may drink? Can I tell you that I have had the privilege to be there or to be the there that God has used to help someone? I'm glad that I have listened to God's voice and not what others had to say. Can I tell you that, tell you that at times I wanted to stop, quit, and move on and give up being the pastor of this church. But God says, don't move yet. Not yet. I'm sending people there. Listen, I don't get upset when people leave. Maybe PCP was just a temporary there for them. But I also believe that you could move too quick and miss out what God has for you there. So I want to finish with this as you stand up to your feet. How do we figure it out? How do we figure out our dares that God has for us? How do we figure out when God wants us to move from here to there? How do we know when God wants us to go from there to there and from there to there to there? How do we know when God says, stay put for now and stay there? And there's only one answer. You got to go deeper with God. Because if you don't listen and start tuning your ear to God's voice, there is a lot of theirs that involve places, people, and times that God had set up for you. But because you were distracted and disconnected and short-minded, you missed out on those opportunities that God had for you. You missed them. You missed them because your ear was in tune for the Lord. Because you moved too fast on your emotion and your desire. And you didn't know that God wasn't ready to move you just yet. He wanted you to stay there. And other times God says, I need you to do this now. It's time for you to do that thing you wanted to do. That dream I placed in your heart. That desire that's been burning in your heart to do. But you didn't listen. Because your ear was in tune for the Lord. Because every time that Elijah moved from here to there, to there was on the voice of God. And even though the circumstances were not suitable to the eye of men, God used the un most improbable people. He used ravens and he used the poor widow to sustain him. And there's people in your life that you've missed out on because you don't want to change your attitude towards them. There's people that you've missed out on that God says, man, I, I was going to use this person to bless you, but you just have the wrong attitude about everything. And I can't use them. And you say, well, it's because God, they're ravens. He says, yeah, but I'm still going to use them. You say, well, God, what were they going to give me? They, they, they don't even have... I said I was going to sustain you. And sometimes the there that we're stuck in 
It's just our attitude. And we don't see that God knows what he's doing. And he can use anybody to bless your life. If you listen to the voice. So what is the whole purpose of this series? Because I believe that you've missed out and I've missed out on some dares for us. That God had designed for us and we just, we missed them. We missed them. We missed them. You say, well, what do I do now, Pastor? Well, first of all, don't worry that God's never shortchanged. Don't worry. Maybe you missed some. But I serve a God that has a lot, lot more. So if you learn to, to tune to God's ear, you're going to find out that there's people and places and seasons that God needed you to understand. Because that's where the there that he was going to bless you in. Do you receive the word today?